Mixing chemicals together causes reactions and produces new molecules. With so many different chemicals in existence, there are infinite combinations that can be made and millions of chemical reactions yet to be tried. But doing these tests is very time-consuming, laborious, and it has a low success rate. It's also very susceptible to human failings, like bias and fatigue. To surmount this, University of Glasgow chemist Lee Cronin has invented a robot to test his chemical combinations for him. What's more impressive is that this robot can actually learn. By testing random chemical combinations from an initial set of 18 chemicals, the robot gathered data about chemical reactivity and could predict what other chemical combinations would cause reactions. This helps the robot decide which chemical combinations to test next. Lee Cronin told me, Marie Gottman, how his computer came about. Well, to be brutally honest, I wanted to develop a technology to help me find the reactions that would give rise to the origin of life or how life got started. But to do that, I needed to make a system that would do chemistry without bias and go and discover with no expectation of discovery. So I had to build a robot that would do all the boring stuff. A robotic chemist. I'm imagining a robot in a lab coat running around your lab playing with chemicals. But what does this thing actually look like and how do you operate it? Yeah, so it it acts like a chemist, actually, but it looks very different. So it's a series of pumps and valves in a fume hood, and it's operated by a computer, and it's connected to an NMR spectrometer and also an infrared spectrometer and also a mass spectrometer, all in the fume hood. The NMR tells us new molecules that are made using magnetic resonance. The infrared tells us if new bonds are made, and the mass spec tells us if there's new molecules from the weight increasing. And aside from avoiding human bias, are there any other benefits to using this robot rather than a human chemist? We're not trying to replace a human being. What we're trying to do is make sure that the human gets to do more interesting stuff. So by setting the robot up to do all the boring stuff, all the stuff that we don't know is going to work, we can really search chemical space faster than we were able to before. For instance, we could basically do about you know, 50 to 100 reactions a day without any bias and also to explore existing reactions that we thought already worked in one way and just say, well, let's go and see if this reaction really works like this and make new discoveries with an existing knowledge. What chemicals did you test with this robot? How did you know what you should go through and feed to this robot to test it? So to, to get going, we decided to choose some chemicals that were quite reactive. Well, so we chose 18 reagents that would work together and generated about a thousand possible recipes. And then we just got the robot to go through those recipes randomly and do approximately 10% of all the reactions. And just after doing about 10% of all the possible reactions, the robot was then able to use the inbuilt machine learning to predict the outcome of the remaining 90% of all the reactions. Incredible. And what were some of the findings from this process? Our robot, without bias, was able to find four new reactions and four new molecules. And was this robot capable of knowing that its findings were new? Did it have access to a previous database of what's already been discovered? No, we made a firewall. We did not want to bias the robot. So the robot just went blindly searching. So all we told the robot is just find things that are new to you and don't worry about the absolute novelty. Then separate from the database that it did not know of, was this robot able to confirm findings that are already out there as well? Yes, indeed. So it was able to rediscover loads of existing chemicals and reactions. And that was really gratifying because it showed that not only was the robot able to repeat known reactions, it could also start to record reactions that were not productive or effectively failed. So it recorded failure and success, confirmed success in the literature and discovered new things. So do you see the potential to create more of the same robot to work at this simultaneously? We could distribute perhaps the code that would come from this robot so other users could implement the code to reproduce our findings more easily so we could kind of have like a a chemical Spotify for collaboration and discovery in real time of chemical space. That was Lee Cronin from the University of Glasgow and his study can be found in the journal Nature.